Many thanks for your company. Now, some students of the Ghana School of Law are attributing the failure of 383 of them to pass the bar exams on the existing curriculum. Currently, students at the school study 10 courses in 10 months. Former director of the Ghana School of Law, Kweku Ansa Asari, says the massive failure is largely due to the nature of students who he claims are not prepared uh, and uh, also distracted by social media and fail to read. Former director Kweku Ansa Asari joins us via phone now. Good morning, sir. Thanks for your time. Thank you. Good now, now, the students uh, totally disagree with your assertion that they are distracted and that they do not um, uh, concentrate and they fail to read. For them, it's the nature of the course they are studying in school. That's the reason why a lot of them failed. Thank you. I um, made uh, my point clear already that the combination of factors have Hello, Mr. Ansasari. It's, it's quite difficult hearing you if you don't mind repositioning. Pardon? I'm saying it's quite difficult hearing you if you don't mind repositioning, sir. All right, it's, it's, good to, it's, it's good now. Let's go ahead, uh, please. Okay. Mm. Yes, I was saying that a combination of factors might have led you know, to the athlete's mass performance in this case, but it's not you know, uh, an abnormal phenomenon at all you know, to have over 400 students in uh, a law examination and only 91 passes. The fact that you know, 91 passes in this that they should all have passed if they had uh, you know, uh, performed creditably. Mm. Uh, the summit has happened. If you meet the requirements you pass, you don't meet the requirements you pay. The point I'm making is that the students, that the second generation of law students that we are teaching, do not seem to prepare adequately you know, for the uh, present and specialized exam. That this is from my personal experience. As I you know, indicated earlier on, I've taught for 41 years. And I've taught uh, several different generations mm. of law students. Each generation has their peculiar uh, interests and problems and challenges. Mm. Uh, currently, we have uh, a variety of challenges confronting students. And I mentioned social media. Mm -hmm. we, pay more, we seem to be paying more attention you know, to what we do on phone, what we watch on television, what we listen on radio, you know, the detriment you know, of our uh, study material. I need to emphasize that the study of law requires you know, um, a certain amount of time Mm. If that time is not devoted or dedicated to you know, the one study, naturally the end result will be failure, which is what has happened. I'm not there by meaning to suggest that or uh, anticipate what has happened. But because you know, we are speculating, we are having had opportunity mm. to look at the case. So all that I'm saying is from my personal experience. Okay. You know, as a lawyer, I know I need not you know, be speculating. Mm. And because the kids are not in front of me, I can only have that yet. Sure. Um, yes, and that is exactly what I'm doing. I'm listening to the students that I heard them out there, and I'm saying that it is a shared responsibility. We have competent lecturers, all right, but it's not the lecturers who are going to write the exams for them. It is the students. Mm. The lecturers have finished their job. It mm. is time for the students to, students, you know, to be examined. Now, if they say we need to identify the root causes, you know, uh, as their failure. Did they, did they follow instructions, for instance, you know, speaking? Did they understand, you know, as required? Did they refer to a relevant authority? How much, you know, uh, of the constitution of Ghana did they know? How much of the other strategy materials did they cite? Mm. How much, you know, uh, case law did they refer to? How did they mention, you know, as the uh, head of state authority? All these things are there. We don't know, you know, we don't know how much of these things each 
prominently mm. you know, in the answer. So I can only you know, answer that again. Mm. And presumably, if you have prepared adequately, I expect the one who passed, he would have passed. In many cases, it doesn't mean that merely because 400 presented, you know, or were presented, all 400 will pass. All right, Mr. But then it will cease to be an exam. Mm. Yeah. The purpose of any exam is to screen, isn't it? Mm. All right, Mr. Ansari, <laughs> talking about that, some have raised concerns about the percentage. So, yes, for example, when you present 400 students, you don't expect all of them to pass. But you are looking at 81% failure. And for many people, that's an indictment even on, on the law lecturers themselves. I disagree. You know, the law lecturers, you know, they do their duty. You know, when uh, their duty ends, it is the student's duty begin, mm. and that's you know, the a lot of things happen. You know, students' approach to study these days uh, has a lot to do you know, with uh, their, their attitude. Some students don't sleep at all before the exam. They'll be cramming and cramming and confessing, mm. and then very little time to you know, what actually on hand. Mm. So they enter the exam room sometimes. Maybe some of them do sleep even their car. You know, they have to be, you know, awaiting to go and write the exam. All these things are happening. Uh, Mr. Sassari, there's also the angle of the Independent Examination Board because uh, the Student Representative Council President, uh, Sami Jemfi, he said that illegality surrounding the establishment of the IEB erodes the credibility of the marking scheme and results. What's your take on that as well? They may have, they, they have a point in there. Uh, as far as the... Uh, independent examination for the content. The process has not been, you know, that much transparent. So, you know, our review to some extent, you know, we, we, we have views on that. Um, but having said that, the one baffles me, you know, is the fact that the students are accepting it is that they ought to have passed. Writing exam is different from you know, uh, examining. Mm -hmm. The examiner, the staff, you know, that in this year, that you know, the examiner is looking for. If they are not there, it's naturally, the paper is not possible. Mm. So I don't know what went into you know, this particular part. As I should say, it is only when you know, I and look at the script, you know, that I can pinpoint precisely what has happened. You know, but for me, 41 years of teaching, these are some of the factors, mm. you know, that uh, well, now, now the students are asking uh, that they want their papers to be remarked, and not only do they want that, they also want the a different examination board to mark those papers. Is that a possibility at all? It is a possibility, but they submitted you know, themselves you know, to certain uh, rules and regulations before. You know, so when they, uh, they, they apply, you know, to register for the exam, I'm sure they were aware of the rules, you know, and if uh, they, they took the examination mm. under those rules, then they should allow the internal mechanism, you know, to be adopted. Mm. Finally, Mr. Ansasari, currently the, the Ghana School of Law has been in the news, generally legal education in the country. We have an ally in, in parliament and the students don't want it to be passed. Now we are getting this. How do you think that this all plays into the development of legal studies here in Ghana? Well, um, speaking for myself, I would describe the ally, the proposed you know, ally as a, a boogie. Ally. You know, sometimes we have boogie laws. That is today. The airline is one of such boogie regulations. You know, attempting to intimidate students, threatening them. We don't need that. We need a credible system of process that is transparent. You know, that uh, such that when a candidate fails, a candidate, you know, will be all well, 
I know I did do well or I did well that but the whole process must now get the community. And that is you know, one of the, the causes you know, for, for the current conversation that is you know, going on. You know, in the, the, the secret is more than the fact that it is in the category mm. of the student. What I will suggest to the General Legal Council is that it should be transparent and allow the, 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 the process to be so transparent that even when the candidate has failed, the candidates will not you know, find any into you know to uh, uh, blame. But mm. the way we are going about it, when I'm going to write the exam, the general guidance will say I should not complain. If I say I shouldn't ask for review, if I don't pass the they shouldn't do that. The system you know, should be such that like mm. if a candidate says there might be a process by which the candidate can appeal you know, the decision of the examining body. That way, everybody is satisfied you know, with the process. But the process that is allowed you know, uh, views to be heard or grievances you know, to be resolved is mean, not a credible system. And I'm afraid the General Legal Council has uh, created mm. you know, an expectation in students that they are not really able to make themselves a big problem. Thank you very much, Mr. Kwekwan Sarasari. He is the former uh, director of the Ghana School of Law. Now, Sami Jemfi, president of the Student Representative Council of the school, however, thinks that the former director's comments uh, that uh, they are not serious and distracted by social media, he thinks th those comments are unfair and unfortunate. He adds, the argument that past students studied 11 courses in nine months but did better is immaterial to the current discussion. Now, they subsequently call for a remarking of the papers by a different examination board. My colleague Max Olakpaba has been speaking to some students. Today we are in red here as a form showing support to our seniors who, have, who, have, who failed their examination. Mm. An examination where over 500 students wrote and just 91 of them, 91 of them passed. That's less than 20 percent. Mm. And if just less than 20 percent of students pass an examination, that means there's something fundamentally wrong. Mm. And we think that the independent examination body should be scrapped. Mm. Since this independent examination body was, was established, there have always been problems. And as we, we always say that you can't have the cure to the disease causing more problems than the disease itself. Mm. The cure is more, the cure is now a canker, and the cure is causing more, it's, it's, now, it's, now, a, it's now a bigger de disease than the disease that it was brought into cure. Our lecturers, we have, we have good lecturers, men of integrity, we have Supreme Court uh, judges teaching us, we have Court of Appeal judges teaching us, and even all our lecturers are people who are qualified to be justices of the high courts, that's the Superior Court of Ghana. And we have these people teaching us very well, and these people should, they have the capacity to mark. Now, since the inception of the IEB, every time there are, there are problems with our examination, now, with just 20% of the people passing, that means that there's something fundamentally wrong with the system. And this is an indictment on not just the students, but even an indictment on legal education, mm. that just 20% of, less than 20% of the students are passing. Well, now, there's a saying mm. in Chile that, so who's the one you about to say, she not to say, just this May, you're also going to write our examination. And we don't think that we should subject ourselves with this IEB. Our time, we are more than 500 people going to write. We don't know our fate. Probably our time, they'll come and tell us that just 53% of the students pass. What is wrong? We should know what is wrong. Okay. It is our position that the IEB should be scrapped. Well, you, you stated that um, there's something fundamentally wrong with the yes. IEB. But there are some who also are pushing the arguments using the ICC concept of GAIGO, garbage in, garbage out. Don't you think there's something fundamentally wrong also with the students who start for the exams? There's nothing fundamentally wrong with them. You know, every lawyer in Ghana is, an alumni, is part of the alumni of this institution. Hmm. Now, the IB was established three years, just about three or four years ago. Hmm. But all the lawyers in Ghana right now, the other time, it was the lecturers who set the questions. They are same lecturers marked, they passed, and these people are the ones driving the judiciary and the legal, the leg, like the the judiciary and the, uh, the legal aspects of the country. That's we have, we have ministers who are here 
and who are lawyers who pass through the same system. Our Supreme Court judges pass through the same system. The members of the General Legal Council currently constituted, they pass through the same system. Even the people who are part of the IEB now pass through the same system. And it's that same system to revert back to because this IEB is, 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 a, is a canker. Mm. Yes, they, they, they might have been issues with our electric marking and that issue should be corrected. Okay. We should put in better measures, stringent okay. measures now, to correct those issues okay. than to allow the IEB to cause the kind of problems that is being caused right Let now. me come to your colleagues. Um, in fact, at the public, um, at the open forum that you held yesterday, um, some key resolutions came out. You've spoken about aspects of faith that is scrapping the IEB. Yes. There are some who are saying that the demands that you are making unrealistic. Um, the General Legal Council cannot meet those demands. One of them is that um, the remarking fee should be, um, the cost of the remarking fee should be reduced from 3,000 Ghana cities to 500 Ghana cities. Somebody says, I mean, it's not realistic. That cannot happen. What do they mean by that cannot happen? Can every student afford 3,000 CDs per paper? Per paper? Mm. So if you want five papers to be remarked, how much is that? Do the maths. How many wow. people can afford this? This is which is more than our school fees. Yes, which is more than our school fees. It's, it's, ca we, ca we cannot we cannot stand for this. No, no, something yeah. must be done. It the 3,000 CDs is just too much. Mm. 500 CDs is even more realistic. I don't even. I personally think 500 CDs is even still too much per paper. People are here who struggle to pay their school fees, you know? And for this amount of money, who, who, how? No, 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 no. We can't stand for this. No. Well, there, there are others also um, who are saying that, I mean, something needs to be done regarding the um, examination here at the Ghana School of Law. We all know the ongoing tussle between, you know, uh, um, the GLC and then, uh, I mean, some of the students and all of that. What do you think is the way forward? Well, I think if um, bringing in IEB was to make things more transparent and mm. fair, and less hassle for the student then obviously they are not achieving their objective so um, a lot needs to be done obviously they need to sit down and listen to the students a lot more mm. in terms of way forward so that um, good measures can be put in place because right now it's very tough on students mm. you know we are talking about examinations um, it's not under any normal under any normal circumstances examination um, it brings a lot of pressure and a lot of stress on students so for you to have this pre uh, um, constitution that this is what was going to happen or is likely to happen mm -hmm. even before the exams and after the examination it's very tough so we all need to come together and we all need to plan um, and see what can be done um, in in the near future I think it's very important okay. uh, uh, now let me um, come to you there's an it also that talks about internships and then um, the I mean repetition policy for the Ghana School of Law as part of the resolutions they are asking the exam should be written in June instead of March. And they are saying that for all the students who start and then wrote the examinations, they should be given the chance to do their internship irrespective, uh, irrespective of the outcome of the exams, whether they failed or they passed. Do you think that is fair? Yes. Now, with the repetition policy, students write six papers in the first semester and four papers in the second semester. The students who are deemed to have, who are the, per the publication, the over 295 students who we are told have been repeated, couldn't pass these papers within eight months. Now, the results have been delayed, and now we just have about two months to write the examination, because we are writing exams in May. So if these students couldn't pass their exams in eight months, how are they going to pass their exams within two months? Now, they've missed, we are, right now, with a course like civil procedure, we are almost done with the syllabus. We are almost done with the syllabus of some of the courses. The reasoning behind the repetition is that these people can come back to classes, listen to lectures again, because probably they miss, they miss certain things. Yeah. Listen, learn afresh. Like, they are retaking the full course so that they can be able to write exams and pass. Now, we just have two months of examination because of the delay caused by I. Students wrote exams as far back as May last year, and they didn't receive their results. They wrote another examination, the second semester examination, in September. Their result was released yesterday. And we expect all of them to come back and rewrite their papers, including the ones they passed, within two months. That's absurd. So we support them when they say that even if even after everything has been resolved, the students who failed should be allowed to only write the papers that they failed. You can't punish someone giving the person two months to write six papers, where even when the, the period that you gave them eight months to write the papers, they weren't able to pass mm. under these conditions of the IEB. 
what you are fighting for in the long term is that the IEB should be scrapped. Well, so the mass failure recorded in last year's Ghana by exams appears to have strengthened the cause of a U.S.-based US Ghanaian professor who has been campaigning for reforms in Ghana's law education. Now, Professor Stephen Kweku Osiris said the 81% failure rate in the 2017 bar exams is, quote-unquote, one more proof. 